If it's Wednesday, it's Hump Day Hangover. Greetings everyone, I'm Bart, the Success Educator, and today's topic is Dress for Success. So, grab yourself a cup of coffee, or how about a cocktail, and let's get started. This is Hump Day Hangover. So check this out. Your outer appearance dictates absolutely nothing about what kind of person you are. But it does influence the way you feel. For example, if you stay in your jammies all day, then you're going to be more relaxed, you may be in a do-nothing mood, and thus your focus and attention to detail may not be as great. But when you dress for impact, you create an impact. Now today's lesson, as with all, comes from my best-selling book, My Moment to Succeed, available out on Amazon.com as well as in many independent bookstores. So be sure and get yourself a copy. I'd be glad to autograph it for you and personalize it for you. Let's get back to our topic of dress for success. When you present yourself in a way that makes you feel confident, your confidence begins to shine through in everything that you do. In fact, 55% of someone's perception is based on how you look. Now, I'm not talking about always wearing a, a suit and tie or if you're a, a female, a power suit. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about wearing something that makes you feel confident. Because you see, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And good or bad, that impression lasts. Making good impressions does give you a competitive edge. It also provides initial validation and, and confidence in the person that you are the person that they're looking to befriend, they're looking to become a colleague with. You are the person they've been looking for. But dressing for success need not be expensive. There's many consignment and thrift stores out there that have designer clothes at a fraction of the cost. And dressing for success is also not limited to the work environment. At home, when you do dress, you create a more productive environment. Sloppy dressing often produces sloppy work and sloppy results. Just think about what you wear around the house when you want to clean house versus work out in the yard versus you've got something to do that's maybe work-related or, or studying or needs, to, needs your full attention, how you dress does impact the results you receive. Now, many entrepreneurs contend their success is based on the way they dress. And again, not always talking about shirts and ties or, or power suits. Think about these two people, Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg. Steve Jobs was known to always wear a turtleneck. The turtleneck was part of his brand. That is who he, he was. Mark Zuckerberg always wears the same color tee. These are things that, that make their brand. It is part of who they are. And look at how much Steve and Mark both have changed the way we all live. Thanks to the power of social media, thanks to the power of what Apple has done, not only the Mac, the iPhone, the iTunes, the iPad, the iPod, but they have an identity of who they are. Much like what I have with the Success Educator clothing. When I go out, I wear something with a Bardism on it because it's part of my brand, it's part of who I am. So the way you dress really does communicate who you are. And everything you do makes a statement. Yes, it is true. You can't judge a book by its cover. But packaging does sell, and presentation is everything. When traveling, many, many people dress in what they consider business casual attire. When I travel, I wear a Bardism shirt or a hoodie. Because rarely do entrepreneurs and people who really want to get ahead are they ever caught in yoga pants or sweats or gym shorts? Their attitude is, you never know who you're going to meet 
And that is so true. The other thing to keep in mind is dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Dressing down at work and not showing personal pride is an indicator you may not get ahead. Clothes make a strong visual statement about how you see you. Yes, you may be expressing your individuality, but you also could be sending a message that you don't believe in you, that what you've created is a facade. Now, what is considered appropriate dress is defined by you. Society may, may have its own definitions and there may be guidelines that you must adhere to at, at work or at school. In fact, growing up, when I was in middle school, we had a very strict dress code. Now, where I went to middle school, all 12, 13 grades were on the same campus. And the dress code there was very, very strict, unlike many schools today. The boy's hair could be no longer than the bottom of the back of your shirt collar. All shirts must be tucked in. Shoes and socks were required, as was a belt. Girls could only wear pants on Friday. Their dresses could be no shorter than X number of inches above the kneecap. And shorts were only allowed in gym classes. Now times have changed. It's because what we define as appropriate has changed. But many corporations still have dress codes, as do many professions require uniforms. And the point is here that even with a very strict dress code, you still have a choice. You can choose to abide, or you can choose to ignore and pay the consequences. Appropriate dress and adhering to regulations does express respect. It's respect for the environment or the culture in which you, you work and live. It's respect for the people in that environment. And it's self-respect. So the way you dress does say a great deal about your personality. A survey of recruiters and hiring managers found that 65% credited the way a person dressed as the deciding factor and they're higher between two competitive candidates. 37% indicated they decided not to hire someone based on the way they dressed. So dressing for success is indeed a metaphor for how you live your life. So pay attention to details. If necessary, press your clothes, shine your shoes, wear appropriate accessories, makeup, hairstyle, someone like myself, with the newsboy cap on, that's part of the brand that I have. Think about how you live your life. Successful people understand the importance of a positive image. It is part of their brand. As my mantra says, what comes to mind when someone mentions your name, that is your brand. If you are someone that dress is pretty sloppy and doesn't take care of yourself, you're going to be known as that type of person. How your dress and your image is an external indicator of who you are and your own self-pride. Now Mark Twain once wrote, Clothes make the man. Naked people have little or no influence on society. However, I bet if you were naked in public, you would probably be remembered. Among other things, dress for success. Your commitment is to succeed. So today's journaling, look at a couple of things. First of all, I want you to list the most important decisions on the way you dress when you're at work, when you're in public, and when you're at home. What are the most important decisions you make on the way you dress? And what would you change about the way you dress when you are part of your future self, when you've reached where you're headed? What changes would you make at work, in public, and at home? And then when you visualize yourself living your dream, what are you wearing for fun, for relaxation, at work, or for dressing up for an affair or a gala? 
Be sure and list also three to five things you're grateful for. Do this every day. Today's Bardism comes from Edith Head, and Edith tells us that you can have anything you want if you dress for it. So thank you for spending a few moments with me. Hit that subscribe button below. Click that bell next to it to receive notifications. Go out to my website, successeducator.com, where you can order my book. Click on the links at the top and follow me on social media. And of course, visit the Success Store, where you can get your Success Educator clothes and proudly wear those as well. And once again, remember, what comes to mind when someone mentions your name, that is your brand. Until next Wednesday, this has been Hump Day Hangover. Ciao!